This is going to be another question and answer video. This question has to do with race. Do we really need to think about race today? Uh, does race matter? Does God care about your race? I'd first like to say everyone on this planet came from the same family. If you look at Genesis 9.18, it says, And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. So you see that everybody in this world came from these three men, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All the races would have had to come from these three men. And how that took place is a mystery. I've heard the uh, theories on it, but I, I mean, I don't believe I can know for sure on that. So I don't say that I know for sure. But, you know, if Shem ref re represents the Jews and the Orientals and Ham represents the Africans and Japheth represents the Caucasians and things like that, you, you would only need those three races. And then them three races interming intermingling over the years would give us all the races that we have today. But after, shortly after the ark, eventually man tries to do things without God. And they don't overspread like God wanted them to. And they get together to make themselves a name. And this is when God comes down and scatters them abroad upon the face of the whole earth. In Genesis 11, 8, and 9, it says, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So the Lord wanted Shem, Ham, and Japheth to spread out and populate the earth. But everyone was getting together and thinking that they could make it without the Lord. So he scattered them abroad. He confounded their languages. This process could have included the different races coming about. And the people separated and joining up with the ones who spoke their language. This could be where this came about. As I said, I'm not for certain. That's just a theory. But in Genesis 11:6 it says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So they were getting together. And trying to do things without God. Now, if Shem represented the Jews and the Asian people, Japheth, the Caucasian, and the, uh, Ham, the African, then the mixing of the groups could have brought about all the other races that we have today. But with that history of where they possibly came about, is race something that we really need to focus on today? In this day that we're living in, today... If you are a born-again Christian and in the body of Christ, do you really need to worry about what race somebody is? I believe the answer to that is no. And you don't hear me talk about race very much. I don't think I ever even spoke about it in one of these studies until this year because of all the nonsense going on with it. But in Galatians 3.28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So physically... You are still whatever race that you were born, but spiritually speaking, you're neither Jew nor Greek. And I also think the more a person focuses on racial stuff, the more it makes race a problem for people. There are preachers out there who make everything a race issue. Every story in the Bible, they will twist it into something about race. The main racial talk today is white versus black. And there is an evil group of people out there in the world who want a race war. There is an evil group of people who exploit black people for political reasons. They don't really care about black people at all. They don't care about any people. They don't care about white people. All they care about is themselves. And the Christian, in my opinion, should not concern himself with this race war stuff, with this racial stuff. The Lord is no respecter of persons when it comes to salvation. All this race stuff, that's a fight for people in the lost world. And they can waste their time doing that. But for the born-again Christian, I don't think he should waste a second with this racial junk. Because it's all brought about by people agging it on. For example, in Acts chapter 8, I'm going to show you how God is no respecter of persons. In Acts chapter 8... 
he saved the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, 36 through 38. You're going to see one of, the, one of the plainest times a person is saved in Scripture. It's a black man. A black man had the privilege of carrying the cross for the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 27, 32, Simon had the privilege of carrying the cross for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God uses black people, God used white people, God used Jews, God uses every race of people. God doesn't want people to separate because of their race. And I think all the fighting and arguing about race today is a complete waste of time. I think the Black Lives Matter stuff is anti-God and racist itself, just like the KKK stuff. I mean, I think Black Lives Matter is a racist group, just like the KKK is a racist group. And pretty much the more you talk about race, the more racist people will become. The plan of the media is to make all white people think black people are thieves and violent, and they want black people to think all white people are racist and have more privileges than they do. That way they get white people mad at black people. They get the black people mad at the white people. But James 2, 9 says, But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Just be nice to everybody because everybody's having a hard time. Everybody deserves your respect no matter what color they are. And I mean, up until this George Floyd stuff that happened this year, I really didn't give much thought to racial stuff at all. I mean, most people really weren't. I don't think that just because, you know, a white cop kills or supposedly killed a black man, that this means all white people are racist. Just because some people are racist today doesn't mean that everyone of that color is racist. I'm not responsible for everybody else's actions. For a person to say that I need to bow down and kiss their foot and say I'm sorry for being white, that's one of the most racist and stupidest things I could ever even imagine. The Bible says in Psalm 95, 6, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. I don't believe we're supposed to kneel down to any man and kiss his feet and ask him for forgiveness. Um, I don't believe in the systematic racism stuff. And uh, I think that they deceive people into believing that junk. I believe all black people have as just as much of opportunity as I do in this country. I was just sitting in the break room yesterday with five black men. I was the only white person in the room. We got along just fine. And they all make more money on the hour than I do. One of them is even my supervisor. And I'm glad to take orders from him because he's my supervisor. No racist comments are made. We get along fine. We work fine. We act like grown men, not a bunch of kids. So all the racist stuff is just childish stuff. If that's going on, that's childish stuff. And just because there's a racist white person does not mean all white people are racist. Uh, Romans twelve eighteen says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But for a Christian to fight and stand up for racial stuff is a complete waste of time. You are much better off getting in the Christian fight. Christianity faces way more persecution in this country than any race does. Whether you're white or black or whatever you are, you're part of the body of Christ if you're born again, if you've been saved. And you're more persecuted as a Christian than you are as a black person or as whatever race it is. Because, I mean, just see the TV, for example. Christianity is facing way more persecution. They mock the Lord Jesus Christ on TV every day. They think Christians are crazy. But 1 Corinthians 12 shows you that we are all members of the body of Christ if we are saved. And all members are needed. And uh, the body of Christ includes people from every race. So to have all this racial stuff going on, saying we need to separate because of a race, I don't believe that's so. I mean, I grew up in the mid and late 90s and early 2000s. I don't remember any racial problems going on like at school or anything like that. My childhood heroes were Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, King Griffey Jr., Allen Iverson. All my white friends had the same heroes. 
All my black friends had the same heroes. That's who he wanted to be like. And I'm not saying those are good role models because those guys have done some pretty bad things. But that's who he wanted to be like. I mean, when we played NBA 2K, our creative players were always a black guy with cornrows. I mean, I'm just not seeing the racism everybody's talking about. If racism is such a big thing, then why do millions of white kids love Tiger Woods and all of these black athletes? Why do, they pe why do people pay millions of dollars to see these black athletes? And these athletes, many times, aren't even good influence. They're many times very anti-Christian. I know that there is still racist people, but racism on the regular is just not there like they're portraying it to be. I mean, I live in Hillbillyville in the South, and I don't even see the racism stuff going on. I mean, where else can a black man go and make the amount of money that he makes in America? The, the, uh, the best player on the Bucks who just signed again with the Bucks will be making over 500000 a game. He'll be making $193 a second, $11,000 a minute. That's insane. That's a lot of money. And millions of white people love to watch these guys play basketball, regardless of them being a different color than they are. So how could you say this country is overall racist? When I was a kid and it was time to pick your team... All the black guys got picked over me. I was always the smallest kid and the little white guy. What if I jumped up and said, this is racist. This is racism against short white guys. That would be stupid. Because I completely understand why you would pick a tall black guy over a short white guy that can't jump. That's just common sense. I mean, I don't take any offense to it at all. And um, you don't want to just start being sensitive to this stuff and taking offense over everything you have a lot of a lot of people that are very offended by racist jokes and i'm not for racist jokes but if somebody's telling racist jokes just ignore it who cares or just laugh at it i mean if somebody wants to say a racist joke to me about white people i could care less sometimes it's even funny you know don't let what people say get you down so much I've noticed that black people get so down about if, if there's a racist joke said or if they think somebody's being racist. Who cares? If somebody's racist, then they're the one with the problem, not you. So don't let things like that just make you get so down that you want to get involved in all this racial war stuff. But you have I've noticed a lot of black preachers, they will only talk about racial issues. This fuels the fire along with the news and in the in the entertainment industry to make you think that racism is a problem and i'm not denying that there are still racist people but it's nothing like they're portraying it to be but psalm 133 1 says behold how good and pleasant and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity uh, christians of different races shouldn't divide because of their race because you're now born into the same family they are now your brother and sister in Christ, no matter what color they are. If they are born again, they're part of the same family as you. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I mean, there are times to divide if a, if a person has bad doctrine. For example, in Romans 16, 17, And I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. And it says in 2 Thessalonians 3, 14, And if any obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. If a brother is living in sin, that could rub off on you. You should avoid him, divide from him. 1 Corinthians 5, 11, But now I have written unto you, not to keep company, if a man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous, or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. But if a saved person is a different race, there's nothing that says you shouldn't fellowship. And I say this because there are some churches that believe that. Churches from both race, races who don't want a white person going there or a white church that doesn't want a black person going there. 
I don't think that you should do that. I don't think that makes any sense at all. I think all the racial stuff that you see today is agged on by people, and it's an evil group of people trying to bring in all the racism stuff. I don't believe in being racist to each other. I don't believe in constantly, you know, saying things about other races. I, I think everybody should just get along. And if you are a Bible believer, a Bible believing Christian, then you should get together with other Bible believing Christians, no matter if they are white, black, Asian, whatever. Because as the verse said in Galatians 3.28, spiritually speaking, you're neither. I mean, you're, you're neither Jew nor Greek, as it said. So that's my answer to this question.